Hey everyone, welcome to Stronger With Time. I'm your host, Tony Bataji, a strength coach and a sports and exercise scientist. When I first began coaching individuals in the mid-1990s, I did so purely to pay my way through university. But I quickly became in love with the health and fitness industry, and I loved applying what I was learning with science and theory into the world of athletes and the general public. And I've been doing so now for 30 years. One of the greatest things that I have seen in my career is the adoption of resistance training for women. The gyms in the 1990s and early 2000s was primarily a male-dominated place. But with our understanding of the health benefits for muscle, for power, for bone mineral density, there has been worldwide enthusiasm for females to take up resistance training, especially around menopause. But with the advent of social media, there are many people who have voices, and many of the voices are very conflicting, and some are very narrow and individualized, and others reflect what the science knows and has shown about this topic. I became inundated with requests from my best friend's wives, from direct messages on social media, and asked on the gym floor every day, what should I do if I'm approaching menopause? passing through menopause, or it's well and truly passed years ago, and I'm now approaching older age. What do I do for my muscle, my heart, for my bone? Because I have heard this, and now I'm confused. And I try to tackle some of these common confusions and common myths in social media, but social media is not the place for the discussion of nuance and the giving of recommendations. I realized that I needed long form discussion, but I also quickly realized that I needed to go straight to the source because when giving a recommendation or making a claim for a particular style of training or a methodology, I would look at the research and a number of names would keep popping up in various fields. In the world of sports and exercise scientists, there are a number of labs in the world doing truly remarkable work. And a lot of this work is not known to the general public. So rather than me, a coach, talking about what I've been doing for 30 years, I thought I would go straight to the source of the individuals doing the research that we rely on when giving the general public a recommendation for their exercise program. Over the next coming weeks, I interview the giants in the world of research of muscle, protein, hormones, the biology of aging, cardiovascular training, mindset, breathing, and other very exciting topics. I thought that this is a conversation where I could blend my experience as a coach alongside the experience that I've had with other world-renowned coaches and engage and ask questions of those scientists who are doing the work that we rely on when we give advice to females. What you're going to learn over the next several episodes together is essentially a master class in the biology and the physiology of aging as a female. What happens prior to menopause in terms of the hormonal fluxes across your cycle and how that impacts training. And then do you need more protein as you approach menopause and after menopause? What's the best style of resistance training and how often should you do it? Should it only be strength oriented or should we explore all the different rep ranges and different types of muscle contractions? We will look at nutrition with one of the world's greatest sports dietitians and also have conversations with generalists in exercise and sports nutrition as well. These conversations have been eye opening for me and I have taken so much of it into my practice working with the general public. The best way to support this podcast is to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple, and share it with a friend who you might think would benefit from this podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Stronger With Time, where science meets strength and women rise with both.